Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Talking about the security, right? So within security, what exactly we do? See, as a security professional, your work is basically to help organization to protect. Protect yeah. against what? Protect against several types of attack. Protest, protect against uh, the different type of issues normally organization is going to face there. Right. So what are those issues? What are those attacks? That is what we have to understand in this security plus curriculum. And what are some of the protection control can be configured yeah. to improve the security? Right. So in the first lesson, first we have a security role and security control. That is what exactly we will discuss. It means in this lesson, our aim is to establish the context for the security role and introduce the concept of security control. And there's lots of different frameworks also available. So framework basically going to offer you the structure and guideline. See, most of the time, whenever we are, whenever we are starting, we are not sure from where we should start. Right? So that the structure and guideline will help you to at least move forward. Yeah, definitely you have to make changes as per the organization structure. Every organization is having their own structure. They they always don't follow the the strict guideline given there by the might be the government or and several other bodies there. But at mm -hmm. least they will try to cover up all the requirement of the uh, standardization body. Okay. Right. So in this section, we'll try to understand the same thing there. See, when we are talking about the security, one of the most important thing we have here is that we should know the context of the security itself. I mean, from where we have to start, right? So one of the most important point we have is called the CIA triad, right? So CIA triad means see, at the end of the day, what we are actually doing, we have several different type of resources within an organization which we have to protect and that is called as what asset so you can simply right. say anything which is valuable for the organization is called as asset so valuable for what valuable for the goal of the organization the organization is going to set a certain goal that they are trying to achieve and to achieve that goal they are going to have certain assets now that assets could be a very high end server it could mm -hmm. be a unique infrastructure, like when we are when we are dealing with petroleums, when we are dealing with gas stations, right? We require a unique infrastructure. Right? right. That infrastructure is the asset for the organization. Without that infrastructure, they cannot do the business. Right. Similarly, to manage that infrastructure requires some uh, you require some people. So that people is also your asset. Right. So anything which is valuable to achieve the goal of the organization is called as the asset for the organization. Right. And the problem is that that is okay. See, if everything is go is going well, there is no problem there. But problem is that there are lots of bad guys are also there around the internet, right? Which is trying to right. take over that particular asset, either for their own benefit or they are going to sell that particular resource to other another consumer. So so you will get some loss and whatever, right? So in such case, what we have to understand that every asset which we use to uh, take care or use to manage for Protect. our organization, right, mm -hmm. is having certain set of loopholes. It there could be a, you know, less severe loophole, could be a very severe loophole, but there is some loophole we have, right. Now this loophole is simply called as vulnerability, right. Right. So vulnerability is basically the loophole which is possible against your asset. Now, how severe that loophole definitely we have to identify. But for now, we need to understand that not all the resources is equally secure. Some are having less severe loophole. Some are having very severe loophole. Right? In such case, yeah. we have to understand those vulnerability. Because if you don't know what is that vulnerability, we cannot go for the protection as well. The okay. problem is that even if this vulnerability is there, there is no any problem. Problem is there because there is a threat available around the internet 
which can take benefit of this vulnerability right mm. so there is a vulnerability there is a loophole so far there is no any problem but let's suppose there is a threat created to exploit this vulnerability or you can say there is a threat created to take benefit of this vulnerability the problem will going to arise there so if this threat will try to take over the vulnerability then in such case they can control your asset very easily let's take an example in your home there is no any door right and uh, yeah. there is no any door lock in such case what will happen the intruders can take benefit of that vulnerability and they can you know do some damage correct right so that is one simple example of this threat and the vulnerability so if this, let's suppose there is no any threat in i think you live in canada correct mm yes so let's suppose there is no any threat in uh, canada there is no any thieves available there is no any looters available correct in such case mm-hmm. even if there is any vulnerability there is no any issue for us correct right. so pro- right. pro- yes. problem will come when these both things are actually comes together it means there is a vulnerability and if there is a associated threat also available and because of that there is a risk present on your asset right so on as a very simple mm-hmm. note if i need to define risk risk is the possibility of a certain event giving some negative issues right so possibility yeah. of a event and their negative consequences that is called as risk so possibility of a event like a uh, virus attack virus attack on your system can possible right so this a it's a event virus attack is a event but because of that virus attack if your file got corrupted that is the consequences consequence right so if both comes together then only there is a risk on your system or in your organization correct hmm so organization first will try to understand what are the risks available and then after they will go for the fixes right Right. now the question is let's suppose i know there is a threat available i know there is a vulnerability available then what then what we have to do then in such case you have to understand or you have to measure what key pillar of security these two are basically breaching now remember whenever we are trying to measure security against our asset we simply check what exactly this asset require so remember not all, every organization is having equal priority right yeah. if you go and talk to military organization they have a different priority if you do go and talk to the government organization they have different priority if you go and talk to the organizations who is basically uh, there in the market for making money they have completely different priority right so every mm-hmm. organization is having their own priority accordingly the assets they are going to purchase and accordingly they will try to make the business so whenever we evaluate security we have three key pillars against which we are going to evaluate the security the first key pillar is confidentiality right so confidentiality means making our information confidential only available to the people who is entitled to access so information should be known to a certain group of people only who is authorized to access it so if i am trying to maintain security for my asset i have to check how much confidentiality we require for that asset right right so that one we have to check secondly there is a possibility that uh, integrity can be also uh, breached integrity breach means the information can be changed without your knowledge so if your the information is changed without your knowledge then also it's a damage condition because based on this change information you cannot do the business correct right so this is called as the integrity so integrity is another key pillar which ensure that your system or resource remain same until unless it is changed by the authorized user it means only authorized changes are acceptable over the asset on authorized changes whether it is from authorized user or unauthorized user both are not acceptable so integrity will maintain 
and ensure that your information will be only changed from the authorized user. It should not be changed from the unauthorized user. And if there is any change, we should be able to detect that. Because based on that change information, if you're doing any processing, there is a complete chance that your system or your organization will face a huge damage. Let's suppose I'm managing HR operations where might be today I need to disperse the salary of my employees. In hmm. such case, let's suppose the salary seat has changed without my knowledge, right? It means whatever the dispersal will I will do, that is going to be based on the change information. So we should have a way through which we can detect such changes. Otherwise, this will create a devastating effect on the organization. Right. So this is another key pillar of the security integrity. And the third key pillar of the security is availability. Right. You mm -hmm. cannot only focus on the confidentiality and integrity. You have to also focus on the availability. If the information is not available to the customer, how they will do the transaction, right? Right. Sometimes we focus more on the confidentiality and because of that availability is going to suffer. Let's suppose you had, uh, you had taken lots of precautions, lots of measure and the asset which you are trying to protect is under your control. That is okay. But whenever you're trying to access it, there is lots of delay happening. Let's suppose you have to you have to unlock three or four uh, locks there okay and might be that lots of protection you have to turn off and then only you can access your asset which is present in your home right it's going to create mm -hmm. a kind of delay which will impact your availability see customer will be not be going to uh, happy if they are trying to access the information and the trying and the moment the information is available to them is having a very huge delay, right? So this is going to impact the availability. And in such case, they will try to move into the another location. Let's suppose I'm trying to do a shopping today. And I went to Amazon website. Their, uh, their website is down today hmm. because of any reason, right? I tried one time, I tried two times because Amazon was my favorite. I tried even the third time as well. But because after third time, I lose my patience and I move to another website because at the end of the day, I require a product. Whether I'm come, come, getting from Amazon, it might be Flipkart or any other website, that doesn't matter for me. I, I mm. All I require the resource. But what is happening there? Amazon is suffering here. Why? Because of the, might be some, okay. some in, in, yeah, huge protection they had configured because of that users are not able to access or might be their server is down today. It could be any reason. Right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, availability is also important for the business and availability can be suffered because of n number of reasons. Like, uh, let's suppose you have one single system and today it is having some problem. It is not booting up. Right. Then you are not able to join the session. Right. So it is going to impact the availability. Right. Yeah. Similarly, if you have single hard disk to store the data, if that hard disk is down, then you are not able to fetch or uh, store any data on the hard disk, right? So that is again mm. impacting the availability. So availability is basically getting suffered here because of n number of reasons. We have to ensure that all things is implemented properly, right? So whenever we are measure security against the asset, we always take care of these three key pillars, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, right? That is making sense. Yes. Cool. So if security is there, now there is one more key point. So sometimes what will happen, uh, a certain attacker or certain user had done some action. And after that, they are actually denying Then no, I had not done this action, right? So this is called the repudiation attack. Right. So repudiation is subject is denying from their action what they had committed. Why it is happening? Because you don't have any mechanism through which you can detect such activity. Let's suppose I'm doing some activity and it is getting recorded. Mm -hmm. I cannot deny from my uh, actions. Why? Because there is a law, there is a proper recording available. Right. So that audit, so that is called the auditing. So with the help of auditing, you can you can actually prove that whatever committed is basically true and that is committed by a certain person. 
right so this principle is called as non repudiation right so non repudiation where subject cannot deny from whatever action they had committed so non repudiation is what is one of the control available against what against a repudiation attack so uh, mm -hmm. okay now for that a non repudiation is all about enabling the audit log to ensure that all the activity happening from the user side that is getting recorded right so that is the another very important point here now try remember whenever we are so now we know that how exactly we need to talk about the security i mean what are the key pillars we have to check what is risk what is vulnerability what is threat so i hope that is clear yes then another thing is that whenever we are talking about the security control how exactly we should start with i mean let's suppose you are working as a security engineer you have to implement the control so how exactly we should start with so as i told that you know we generally follow some certain structure some some framework so framework will provide you a defense uh, overall defense architecture which will help you to guide how exactly you should have to move forward what we mm -hmm. have to understand there are multiple different type of threats available around us previously we were so much focusing on the external threat only it means anything which is coming from outside that okay. is a threat for me right but nowadays that is not the case nowadays even the internal threat is also there and there was a case study where it was tell, uh, told that uh, most of the attack is coming because of the internal reason it could be intentional it could be unintentional but it is because internal users are not aware about the security issues most of the time the breaches are happening okay so we mm -hmm. have to first understand that how, why a particular threat can realize against your organization that is the most important and then based on that we can actually go for the implementation of control so the controls like i mean first we have to identify what is the threat right 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 then we need to accordingly move forward right so identify then uh, i mean first you have to identify what exactly you are trying to protect i mean the protect. asset right yeah. then we have to detect the threats right then if the detection is done we have to respond to that threat right mm. and let's suppose that if there is any damage done during the uh compromise then we have mm -hmm. to also go for the recovery action right so remember mm. uh, framework will simply going to provide you a kind of a structure but that structure could be totally different from the structure to structure it means different structure is actually uh, having their own way of defining how the things will actually move forward right from the information security competency side some of the most important activity which we have to do like let's suppose there is a asset mm -hmm. which we are trying to protect first you have to do is call as a risk assessment so risk assessment is what we need to know what are our vulnerabilities and threats yes what are the vulnerability and threat so that is basically helping you to understand the risk remember risk is the on a simple known if i need to define the equation of the risk so risk is the combination of threat vulnerability and impact and impact consequences right okay. consequences correct it means whenever we are trying to do the risk assessment we will try to evaluate these all thing and based on that we can actually decide whether the risk is high or low and accordingly we have to take action Right. right then we have to understand what are the threat actor so threat actor means a person who is getting benefited because of this what attack or because of this risk over and all right it could be your competitor it could be just a script kid guy who just uh, learned the cyber security and they wanted to just do the attack so it could be under mm -hmm. a number of person but anyone who is getting benefited because of the attack is basically called as a threat actor right hmm. what we have to in, understand that we know that uh, such threat or threat actors are there and accordingly we have to put the access control 
Access control means only privileged users are able to access my resources. Unauthorized users should not be. But sometime yeah. there may be a possibility that the unauthorized user will try to access your information. In such case, we have to ensure a proper audit is happening against that resource. It means whenever someone is accessing the resource, there is a proper log it generated. And that log log will help you understand. whether a certain resource is accessed by only the authorized user by or some unauthorized user is also trying to access my resources right Good. but if some unauthorized user is trying to access your resources this is basically a kind of incident for your organization right so incident yeah. is what any event which is negatively compromising your confidentiality integrity and availability that is called incident right so again repeating any event which is negatively compromising your cia is incident so in in such case we have to have some incident reporting and response procedure it means yeah. someone have to report that such incident happened and accordingly the response should have been given see the main uh, agenda of the incident reporting and response is to ensure that quick and calm response against any risk so the negative or any issues can be reduced very easily we also have to do the business continuity planning bcp see there is a might there might be possibility that attacker sometime is succeeded in the incident if you are able to respond on time that is okay but if you are not able to respond on time in such case you are in a disaster mode your information is compromised they had already downloaded and then now you are in a disaster mode let's suppose your sensitive information is accessed by the attacker what they can do they can publish on the internet right, right. they they can ask you for the money whatever money. could go at n number of reason so now you are in a disaster mode and if it is in disaster mode mera disaster mode it means now is a time to ensure that we can provide some response and maintain the business continuity because out of disaster there could be a business downtime let's suppose there is a natural disaster and because of that like hurricane or landscaping right and because of that your entire business is down right in such case you should have a plan so if if such incident happen then we should have a plan so we can at least maintain the continuity of the business from it might be from the another location wait so i have a question here right mm-hmm. a uh, location wise i understand bcp mm-hmm. but if it is like say for example uh, they are attacking our asset is not like infrastructure maybe it's it could be like information how do we create bcps in that situation then in such case we have the backup option right nowadays mm-hmm. we have multiple option we can take a backup of the data we can take the backup of the entire server we can put it onto the cloud and we can uh, run it from the cloud in the meantime so when mm-hmm. we are uh, recovered fully then we can move back to our on prem infrastructure right so in quick in case mm-hmm. of information we have a backup procedure we have multiple disk available so even one of the disk is down we can still maintain the continuity right right yeah. so bcp is another kind and the most important thing that whatever you are implementing right it could not be fruitful if the users are not aware about how to implement that it means we have to have the security okay. training as well training and education is very much important because without that users may not able to do the things which you which you actually want uh, in your organization to implement now the question is who is responsible for this entire activity so remember multiple different roles are there who is responsible right. for that at the end of the day accountability belongs to the management right so it is the management who is accountable for protecting the organization ceo cto co these are basically the uh, roles who is responsible for ensuring that your organization is continue to operate and uh, you know uh, in the front line of in the might be in the market right but definitely to provide security they will be uh, giving responsibility to this different person and different yeah. country might be having different roles for the same like in some country you will see ciso chief information security officer 
uh, for the physical security normally we'll take care of by the cso chief security officer right so some some places you will see the technical manager okay who will basically taking care of the security remember they are the responsible but they will not to do the implementation implementation will be done by the administrators so these are Right. the role who is basically responsible for security of the organization and accountability belongs to whom your management ceo ct cto chief technical technological officer so they will be the accountable person so if Will anything they also come under disaster management team? no no uh, see disaster management team is also one of the security capability which we have to do for and normally that is the responsibility of the chief security officer physical security but again it totally depends on what kind of disaster it is Right. logical disaster physical disaster but at the end of the day remember when it comes to disaster everyone is going to take care of that but yes some role is responsible based on what they are managing like chief security officer will take care of the physical security and ceo will take care of the logical security of the organization right such way and one important thing another apart from that that when we implement the control there are two type of control normally we have technical control and non technical control so in case of technical control definitely the firewall antivirus ips these are the solutions we are implementing and non technical control like policies right the standard uh, guideline so these are called the non technical control one such example is the separation of duty one sensitive task cannot be done by single person right like suppose accounts so normally one user will prepare the check another user will will audit that check and third user might be hand over the check to the vendor so this is called as a separation duty where we are ensuring that no any single person is doing the sensitive task if they are doing the chances of fraud and activity going to be very much huge or higher okay right. one important thing which we have to understand that every organization have to ensure that they are taking the necessary care of the organization so this is called as the due care right mm -hmm. see so as a as a uh, technical uh, manager or as a ceo i have to ensure that i am doing my due care i have a certain duty i have to ensure my organization resources are protected right so i have to ensure that i'm performing the necessary due care to protect the interest of the organization right by implementing the necessary security control right so what we had understood so far that what is asset and what is risk right now remember whenever there is a risk there are different type of control you will be implementing right to manage the risk you may have to implement different set of control one such crunch one such control is called as technical control right mm -hmm. so technical control means a control which is going to tackle the logical data issue technical control could be a software it could be a hardware right like firewall so as an example we can take is the firewall antivirus ids right etc there's lots of other solutions available in the market but these are the technical control who will take care of the technical aspects of the data another control we have is called as the operational control right so control that depends on a person for the implementation is called as the operational control right so simply we can say uh, there are lots of activity within an organization we do to ensure that the task is completed on time right so operational control will ensure that a certain resources are protected in their own way right and similarly we have the managerial control as controls that give oversight of the system how do we manage a system i mean there is certain guideline and the standard available and we have to ensure that we are following that so managerial control will take care of that particular thing okay all we will take care with the some examples in the future but for now yes these are the different sort of control you may be implementing but whenever we need to implement these control remember every control is having their own action okay yes like some some control is having detective action detective means 
you are implementing a control through which you can detect the intrusion attempt okay okay so this is called as the detective control right clear point that first control is detective detective means we are going to detect the issue okay kavita you there yes yes i'm here i was have got yes and the another control could be preventive preventive means we are going to prevent the issue let's suppose i am implementing a door door with lock yes it will help you to prevent the intrusion coming to your house so that is called preventive control right the another control is going to be the corrective control through so you can correct the issue let's suppose i have a backup for the my system so if there is any data loss i can correct the situation right so these right. are the major control type we have there right but definitely we have other controls as well like we can also have the deterrent control so you must had seen uh, you know some some people in front of the house simply post a message be aware uh, of the dogs or you are hmm. under the cctv cam surveillance right so these right. are the these are typically the deterrent control there might be a possibility there is no any dog there is no any cctv cam but after seeing that message you are very tentative so if i have any intention to do bad things i mm. may not do or I'm, i may be uh, going to create some different strategy right right so deterrent control is just to deter the user it is not definitely going to stop the user or stop the attacker but at least it is going to make them attentive yes okay i'll give yeah, give them a heads up that correct we are being watched right another control is compensative control so compensative control uh, to understand this uh, let's take an example here let's suppose we have a server this server is a web server right mm -hmm. now normally to protect the web server we keep firewall in front of the server so whenever any user is making request first request to come to the firewall firewall will do the filtering and then only it will reach to the server but firewall can filter the traffic based on a specific address like ip address and port number right mm -hmm. but let's suppose attacker is doing some application based attack it will not prevent so in such case we have to implement a compensative control compensative control could be a waf web application firewall okay. so if firewall is not able to prevent then waf will prevent that attack it means compensative control is compensating the issue which the firewall cannot resolve my primary firewall cannot resolve so in such is it uh, like a second layer of protection we can call second layer of protection yes you can tell but that second layer is basically tackling the weakness of primary control okay it right. it's only not only stopping the threat it also trying to figure out what went wrong with the first first set of the correct you can say okay yeah so this is the another control you will implement right but all in all these all are the different control which control action which will help you to protect now what we had talked about the risk we had talked about the control right but when you go and implement these all controls together mm -hmm. as i told that is going to be quite uh, messy when you have to start first right, right. and that's the reason can we, we can we go through all this once again please Just yeah yeah sure to... thank you so as i told that uh, i will come back uh, so as i told that it, when you are going to implement that is mm -hmm. going to be quite messy right so in such case what we do we take a support of cyber security frameworks right so frameworks mm -hmm. will basically going to provide you the structure and guideline and then it will tell you hey what are the controls you have to implement right so if i get a guideline that these are the controls which will help me to improve the security then it would be good because then in such case i know that what are the works i have to perform right so there are multiple frameworks we have around us like one of the framework is available from nest cyber security framework of nest national institute of standard and technology cyber security framework so nest has given cyber security framework csf nest has given risk management framework which is actually telling you how to detect the risk 
and how to respond to the risk. Uh, one of the major control we implement to manage the risk is encryption. In the future session, we'll talk about the encryption. But for now, understand encryption is a, a converting your plain text information into ciphertext. Okay. To do the encryption, we have a certain standard also available that is called FIPS, Federal Information Processing System or Processing Standard. And apart from that, lots of special publication, normally NIST publishes, which will help you to guide. Let's suppose you have to do the risk assessment. So for the risk assessment, they had done given NIST 830 is one of the special publication. You can say a white paper published by the NIST. Similarly, for the risk management framework, they had published 837, right? For the control implementation, they had published 853. For the data classification, they had published 860. So there are lots of special publication they had already published, which will help you to guide how to implement the cybersecurity in your organization. It means you don't have to work very hard, but yes, you have to uh, go through the documentations which will help you to understand how to move forward. But NIST is not the only person which is there in this market, right? Mm -hmm. Apart from the NIST, apart from the NIST, we have other vendors as well. Like one of the most popular vendor in this uh, place is ISO. And ISO is having their ISO 27,000 different standards. Like one of the gold standard for the information or technology is 27,001. Mm -hmm. ISO 27001, right, which is called as Information Security Management System Standard, ISMS Standard. So whenever you have you are managing information system to secure that information system, the standard which we follow is a ISO 27001, right. Similarly, if I'm going on cloud, for the cloud we have CSA standard, Cloud Security Alliance, Enterprise Cloud Control Metrics Standard. CCM, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if if I need to do audit, for the audit, we have a certain guideline also available. Like normally the service-based organization will conduct the audit. And for that, there is also a standard defined, which is called the service organization control. And under that, they have SOC 1, SOC 2, and SOC 3, right? Again, mm -hmm. right now it is not needed to be uh, to know about all these things. But for the while, you have to understand that whatever we do, there is a certain standard and frameworks already available in the market. It means we don't right. need to work very hard. But yes, we have to understand these documentations, go through with the documentation, and then understand how to implement those uh, documentation. Right. Right. Similarly, if I'm implementing uh, control, then we also have the CIS benchmark that is called Center for Internet Security. So there are a total of 20 CIS controls available, which is actually telling you what are the controls you have to implement to secure the system. Right? If you're trying to secure your application, then we have a OSP that is called Open Web Application Security Project. So that is another mm -hmm. standard available. So as I told, whatever we do, there is a specific standards available from the different different vendors. But all it totally depends on the country, like US and Canada normally follow the NIST standard so much. Okay. And if you go to the European market, normally you will see the ISO uh, standard is so much followed there. Mm -hmm. But again, it is also totally depends on the interest of the organization and the kind of customer we are managing. Because sometimes the kind of customer is uh, coming to you and they are asking you, hey, I require you and your organization to be certified from ISO 27000 standard. I will not deal with you if you don't have that uh, certification available with you. So organization also certified themselves. They prove that, yes, we have all the necessary measures through which I can secure your data. And if they will not give you such kind of, uh, you know, trustness, then you may not able to go into business with them. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is the reason we have to have all these standards getting implemented in the organization, sometime only for our benefit and sometime to prove our customer that yes, we are doing all the necessary care. Okay. So at the end of the day, remember, it's a it's a 
I mean, from the information security side, it's the due diligence effort. So due diligence, remember, is, is an ongoing effort. Ongoing effort means so today I had implemented the control. It doesn't mean that I'm now I'm safe. I have to continuously evaluate the effectiveness of the control and ensure that we are keep updating the controls and managing it properly, right? Like selection of an antivirus after researching the market is one example of the due diligence. And after the right. implementation, continuously updating the antivirus is also what? The due diligence, due diligence only. So continuous update will never stop, correct? It will it will correct. always go on. But yes, after researching about the antivirus and then implementation of that antivirus, that is called as due care. It means you are taking care of your resources. And then again, there are multiple methods which will help you to do that. Multiple apps available. Like when you are uh, working for European market, so for European market, one of the critical regulation they have is GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, where we are ensuring that if I'm storing any information about the European customer, then their data is called as PII, it's called personally identifiable information, their name, their their contact name, their, uh, you know, their social security number, right? So these are basically false under the PII. So we have to ensure that we are protecting. So if you are dealing with European customer, it means your organization also have to compile with GDPR. And according to GDPR, whatever control they had told, you have to implement to ensure that your their data is secure. Similarly, if I'm, uh, you know, you know, in US market, there are lots of uh, federal regulations we have, right? Like one of them is called a GLB, Graham Leachy Billy Act mostly for the uh, taking care of the accounting information or th of the customers. For the health information, they have HIPAA, Health Information Portability yeah. and Accountability Act, right? Uh, similarly, California is having California Consumer Privacy Act. And if I'm having a payment gateway, so whenever we do transaction on the, on the internet, you had seen that there is a payment gateway you are redirected with. So that payment right. gateway should be also certified with PCI DSS. So remember, for whatever we do, there is a certain control or there is a certain force which is telling you to implement certain things. If you don't do, then you are not able to protect the data. And in such case, you're non-compliant and non-compliant case, definitely you may have to pay a huge fine against the organization. Right. Yeah. So this is what about the introductory, you know, slide of your security thanks for watching the video for full course please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today